Lord forgive me for this trap shit. Sergeant Smack make it backflip. Telly Hank it with the action. With the vital speaking Spanish. Frank Matthews, how I vanish. Poof. Came back like I'm King Tut. Gold BBS is on a beamer. When fat cat was tearing queens up. Fall off the prop and not the re up. Fly like Puerto Rican Jesus. Uptown like I'm baby man. Just caught a touchdown from the bay. In the local Midwest area. If I go out, if I go to Joplin, if I go to Columbia, if I go to Iowa, if I go to uh, Oklahoma City, to Tulsa, if I go to Wichita, if I uh, go to Colorado, if I go to Minnesota, if I go to uh, Detroit, if I go to Chicago, if I go to uh, St. Louis, if I go to Houston, if I go to Dallas, they all said Rich the Factory. One thing about it, you can buy Billboard Radio, but you can't buy the streets. You can buy Billboard and Radio, but you can't buy the streets, you did? I'm gonna say that one more time. You can buy. This is my route. I come out the back though. Jump the jump the fence right there. Just shoot down the hill and shit. My favorite route. Back door unlocked. Look, I come out the back door about probably about. 12.30, midnight, get my grid on to about 6 in the morning, slide in, but I already knew that my mom had busted me so many times, and just, you know, I know I wasn't getting away with nothing, but yeah, that was my route though, man. Jump the fence, run down to the project, do my thing. So I cut this way. See up there, that's what's the school. That's a hospital I was born in right there. And I got my wholesale guy and some retail. You dig? I'm the wholesale man. You dig? I learned that from the gang. You dig? The game itself. Yeah, the D game is what got my retail game. I do. And I learned fast, man. I, could. I learned so fast, so I start busting my shit down exactly what it's supposed to be. That's how cold my blade game was, you know. And then once I learned the whip game, it was over. Shout out to the homie who taught me the whip game. You did. So, age 15 and a half, you know, my mama gets home from work. My little bro, Mike, and my sister now, and my other bro in heaven, young week, they gotta get home from school. And uh, by the time they sit down, the boys is at the door. They kicking the door and talk about, man, we got a warrant, search warrant. You did talk about uh, some 
somebody's pushing crack out of here or whatever. So, uh, I was 15 and a half, almost 16. I still went to the, they still took me to the big spot to try me as an adult type shit for my 20. They couldn't charge me with nothing because they didn't find nothing. They took my mama down. They took my stepdad down. Stepdad, we did. Me. And then they took my cousin and they took everybody next door. They knocked off our houses at once. They said we was up here doing it too tough. We did. I was 15 and a half. I had a an 85 Fleetwood with the with the with the wires that they love in Houston right now to this day with Vogue's on it. I was 15 and a half parking in front of the school, parking outside of the school. Didn't want them to see me jumping out that time, you did. This was uh in 89. Yeah, I was man. Driving to school on these niggas. Yeah. So you just so happened that day I let my my dude who I always used to let me use his car when I didn't have one, he was my caddy, you did. I let him go shine. I let him go drive to school. So he, he took me to school that day. So my car wasn't here. That was a good thing, so they didn't get to take my whip. Yeah. But they took my family and taught me a lesson, man. Never shit where you eat, man. You did. That's a lesson I learned. Man, never, never play your mom and them like that, man. So from there on, man, I tightened my game down. Yeah. I had to make moves after that. You did. I had to go get it. Fuck coming to me. I'll go get it. By the age of 18, you know. I'm in a 91 Mustang. Rag top. 20,000 in beat. 10 in paint and, and, and accessories. Interior all the way down. You know, I'm from right here though. In this little old town, man. Getting amazing type money, man, at this time. This is where I learned my volume game, man. I learned the game volume. I know what it meant. Yeah. So, I know that I could do two for ones by this time. Man, shout out to my partners, man, who turned me on to the two for ones, too. You did, because I saw game, too. You did. I, I didn't always have all the game. You did. Even though I, I, I whip it up all day now, but you know, we spread game down here, man. It's the north side, man. 18th Street on back, man. North side of town. But anyway, that's why when I turned into the boy, man, you know, risk the fact. I jumped on that flight, man. I went to go holler, man. Boy JT was making beats, he had hot beats. You know, I went and bought me a few of them, you did. And all throughout that, they knew I was so real. That my, shout out to San Quinn and uh, Demo. They helped lace me, type my game down with this, my rap thing. I already had the, the savvy and the swag about it. I knew what to say, you did. I knew how to, how to, how I wanted to say it, you did. So, my dude and them made sure that I did put my shit in the right bars, help me format my shit into, into music, man, into real songs. They put me in song mode, man, I love them to this day. Yeah. Cause I do it for Mess and Quinn, man. D-Mo, you know, man, that's my field mo crew, man. That's why we got this bay thing built so solid. I know this is touch for this hard for you, but since we're in the neighborhood, I mean, I never met your brother. You know, heard a lot about him, mm -hmm. and we can get a little conversation about that. Oh, man, shit, he he died right down the street down there. He got snipers.
night out by he was with his friend, so-called friend. You know, we wanted to be him the whole time. That's what you gotta watch out for. And you know, he uh pulled his stunt, man. I, mean, I guess they had a little tussle. He shot my bro and shot another nigga that was with him, trying to my other partner. Just so he can clear his name. So I called him boy. He was a jellyfish, man. Yeah. Yellow back. Garden snake, man. He wasn't no he ain't had no venom. His venom was weak. I ain't worried about the venom, man. He's just a garden snake. I don't care how big you is, man. Just a garden snake, man. I don't care how many M's you got under your belt. None of that don't matter, man. He was out here just snaking. I was like the third friend he had snake. Yeah, dude, this was a guard snake. Simple. That's one. Put this all good. No. He left us the foundation solid around here. We're moving forward, man, with this shit. Putting this shit where we gotta go. Can't nobody stop it. Yeah. My bro, he was a, uh, he was a young, like, hockey type nigga. He, he liked to hockey fight these niggas, you did. If you ever watched a hockey fight, you'll know what type of nigga my bro is, man. So he come outside every day, man, looking for, man, anything in the way, man, type shit. So, you know, and on top of that, his money gang was up, you did. Man, he was man, 16, 17, doing the same things I was doing, man. He was having it too. He did. He was riding Chevys with the wettest paint, man. Go, man. Backs to the rubber, all the hydraulics on those caddies, man. Y'all heard the music, man. And y'all know what it is, man. This shit ain't just make believe shit, man. Do your history, man. Y'all, you know about this music, shit. We got this shit in the chokehold, man. You know, we was here, man. We here. 2K 10th Street, that's what I'm repping, man. Straight up. Oh yeah, man. We gotta do it. These niggas. And that's the perfect time, man. It's right when I want to do it. The we street ballers, man. We street ballers, you do it. Tell them, Diggs, we street ballers, baby. Man, fuck with us, man. We do it. Got this game in a choke, man. Y'all know what the bridge is, man. It's from the Bay to Wild State, man. Here go the house, man. Here go the window, man. Hey, we back. This shit got pop. Mob. We on our way to Missouri with it. The show me state. And we're going to be talking about a legend today. Now, with this story being one of my most requested, especially coming out of Killer City, I tried to take my time as far as doing the research. And in that process, I found that this story crosses lines with several other stories that we've told in the past. Now, the person that we're going to be covering today is going to be a guy by the name of Richard Rich the Factor Johnson. Now, if you're in Kansas City, or maybe even the Midwest, Rich the Factor needs no introduction. But to those of you that do not know who Rich the Factor is, he's gonna be arguably the most popular rapper probably in Kansas City history. While others will go on to scream names like Tech Nine and even the late Anthony Fat Tone Watkins. If you ask the streets of Kansas City, everybody is gonna probably say Rich the Factor. Now, Rich the Factor, who himself would state at interviews that he got into the drug game at a very early age. While most people was thinking about what sports they wanted to play or were good at or what outfit they was going to wear to school the very next day. Rich the Factor was sneaking out of his mama's back door, hustling till the sun came up and then driving himself to school at the age of 15. Now, based on my research, he was already well known before he started doing music. 
But as legend has it, Rich the Factor would take $10,000 to California in 1992, where he would link up with a popular Bay Area rapper by the name of JT the Bigger Figure. Now, if anybody remembers this time in Kansas City hip hop history, they will recall the times where Kansas City artists would link up with other artists from the Bay Area and they would go on to use those connections as what we would call a cosign today. Whereas an example on Fat Tone's first CD, it would be presented by California rapper Killer Tay. While doing my research on Rich the Factor, I seen where some people would go on to question this strategy as far as trying to build buzz or build a fan base. But if you was an artist in Kansas City, you didn't really have too many outlets back in 1992. So though the cosign didn't work for a lot of the Kansas City artists, it did go on to work for Rich the Factor who would go on to release upwards of 20 projects. And according to Jan Feishman, who is the president of Seven Heaven, which is a record store that sells Rich the Factor's music locally, but also distributes his music to stores on the West Coast, would go on to say that he's the top selling artist in the store as well as locally. Now, Rich the Factor, who had a relationship with probably the most popular Bay Area rapper that we have covered, Mac Dre would also go on to be a role model for a young Fat Tone. Because while Rich the Factor was gaining wealth during the rise of the crack epidemic that swept through parts of Kansas City, Fat Tone, who went by the name Big Bank early on, was in grade school seeing and hearing about all of it. Now, due to the amount of requests that I got, I would assume that this is a no brainer. But for people in Kansas City and definitely in the Midwest tuned in, is Rich the Factor the most popular rapper to come out of Killer City? And if it's not him, who else could it be? Now, shout out to everybody tuned in, especially my people in the Midwest. I apologize about the delay getting to this episode, but like I said many of times, we are going to cover every gangster in every city worldwide. Y'all just keep sending them through and I'm going to keep knocking them down. Y'all know what it is. It's your Ace Pop-A-Lot Mob Gang.